I heard a lot of good comments about uh, uh, from the gentleman in the middle there about identifying the communication tools for your customers. So you really sort of, rather than pick whether it's Twitter or Facebook or whatever, for from your perspective, going outbound, what is the customer? What are their channels of communication? Mm -hmm. What tools do you use to sort of profile the different demographics? and then select the tools? <laughs> uh, well, over the years, I've used several different tools from enterprise, from uh, you know, Radiant 6 that I know Salesforce is big time. I've used, uh, and these are more enterprise tools. So that's more you know, higher, and if we have 100,000 to 200,000 users. There's not one, as far as my perspective, I had to test Marine Corps style. We had to test 15 different social media manager platforms before I can recommend one. Uh, we, w we went. Uh, for a small business, I would recommend Hootsuite. Very entry level to get used to listening. Uh, you can listen, you know, $9 a month. You can start listening and finding out what channels they're using. Uh, and then you go up to the, the Radiant 6. Uh, so it, it all depends on your size, but you can, there's a lot of free tools that you can use. Biggest tool that you have already to kind of gauge even traffic, what you're using, is your Google Analytics account. You're, you already can see where some of the traffic's coming to your site from what social channels already in that free Google Analytics account that you probably already have. You already have data probably in the, from the last year, two years, five years, seven years. Uh, start from there before you implement a, a specific tool just to kind of see where traffic is coming from. Uh, and then you can go into higher end. I know you guys work with Radiant 6. You can go. Well, yeah, and I don't have to get really tool specific, but what's really important that you touched on is make sure you understand what the holes are. Whatever tool you choose. Make sure you understand what conversations you are catching and what conversations you're not catching. So the big deal is, for example, let's just say we're all in China right now. We're all in China right now. Right now, Radian 6 doesn't cover Sino, Sino Weibo? Sino Weibo? Yeah. Yeah, they don't cover the Chinese version of mm -hmm. Twitter. Or Koo yeah. in Brazil. Right. So that channel is just glaringly missing. Now, if you weren't aware of that, you go, gosh, you know what? We don't even have to worry about this channel, right? Facebook, same thing. Facebook, those protected conversations that are happening that are not visible just externally may make you think you have less people on Facebook than you do that are interested in you. So there are, you just have to make sure that the person, the rightest person is doing the listening or the looking. Mm -hmm. Make sure you get someone that's passionate about this stuff that can really go, I know what I'm looking for, I know what I'm doing, and I'm gonna find the real answer to this question. You can get a really quick, quick and dirty look on, mm -hmm. a, on a Hootsuite tool, but understand what you are catching, what you're not catching. For example, the medical industry, they have a lot of forums, forum-driven conversations with authenticated accounts would not be captured with, say, a, um, a Hootsuite. But in a Radiant 6, where you have that authenticated account, you can request, and I'm just using Radiant 6 because that happens to be my tool of choice, but plenty of other tools will allow this, where you can have your authenticated account pull in at least what the conversations are happening on that authenticated um, platform. I, is everyone kind of following me mm -hmm. on that? Just make sure mm -hmm. you know where the holes are, right? Yeah, you, you want to have a hound dog uh, in charge of that. Yes. Mm -hmm. Go, the, the, who should do that in the organization? Who should do that? The person that wants to. The person that's not sleeping at night because they're interested in this. That's the person that should do that. That's the right person. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, at UPS, I know our, our social media team, which actually I was thinking about where, what department they're under, what function. Um, so they're under communications, but they're part of the public relations team. And um, they, we used to use Radiant 6, but now um, we use, I think it's called Sysmos. Mm -hmm. Sysmos. So that's what we moved to. Um, and they, um, you know, I haven't um, uh, seen a lot of what they've produced, but um, I think that it's working well. I think there were reasons why we moved to a, a different tool. I think we had different needs that needed to be met. 
And um, I do know that they use a lot of that to report back to our leadership so that there's guidance in terms of, you know, what we need to do next, what, where we should be having conversations, what segments we should be focusing on. At UPS, you mentioned that it was a FedEx story that mm -hmm. seemed to wake people up. Yes. I'm curious if others have examples of what has enabled people to say yes, because there are some people at the grassroots level who get it. There's people in this room who think this is interesting, maybe their own curiosity or professional development. But it seems like there's either a corporate culture or a senior executive that's really going to help drive it. So I'm curious what other um, tipping points have come across, if, if you've seen them. Well, there's one that I'll never forget. It, it, it wasn't on social, but it was on the internet. Um, one of the biggest initiatives that we were in charge of the national campaign for uh, suicide prevention for the Marine Corps. Uh, and the generals were like, look, we don't need to do any type of digital, social, that's not, let's just do the old fashioned, J. Walter Thompson was doing the old fashioned you know, posters and flyers and everything. And I found one uh, piece of traffic that came to our website and actually started a conversation with a counselor that I pulled that Google Analytics, and it was a, a kid out of Pendleton who just Googled, how do I kill myself in my barracks? Mm. That piece of one little search term that drove traffic and drove that conversation, I showed it, do you want to not be found by that person? Mm -hmm. Generals all of a sudden said, how much do you need? Mm -hmm. Little pieces of data like that changes, you know, mm -hmm. There was no arguing, there was no why, how, I showed them, this is what your kids or whatever, or you know, 18, 22 year olds are searching on the internet. And they will find how to do that. So you gotta be up there on the top of mind and answer and help them. So that's one thing that I'll never forget. I mean, it was like, I saw that thing in our, our Google Analytics account and I'm like, I got chills. I was like, oh my, you know. I just sent it straight up to DC Quantico. And, you know, things started moving all of a sudden very, very fast. I've never seen a report from Google Analytics be spread around the Quantico so fast that you can never imagine. Pretty interesting and difficult to explain, so I'm going to try and be fast. Um, they are a company that lends, that offers lending to the healthcare industry. And they do brand management listening, but in the course of that, they happen to find out that one of the people that they're extending their product to chiropractor was announcing on his brand's account that he had cured cancer. So now we have this brand that does all this brand management is really, really seriously invested in doing everything right. However, someone they've partnered with, not their brand, but someone they partnered with is announcing that they've cured cancer. And that's when they realized we need to change the way we're doing listening. We need to make this scale <laughs> because there's 20 something thousand people out there that we're offering you know, our services to and we're doing everything by the book, but we can't speak for, we can't be sure that everyone we've ever done business with is also that dedicated. So um, to, to me, uh, that, was, that was a really interesting use case because it, through just luck, through luck, they found out that they had a really rogue unit that could have sullied the brand, <laughs> the brand that they worked so very hard to be completely uh, diligent about managing and, and maintaining and protecting. So a lot of the conversation has been around marketing or communications, listening to the customers. Any learnings around while listening, the transition from a marketing branding initiative to transitioning those conversations to service and support mm -hmm. or product management and product management understanding what the customers are saying. Anything around how you make those various silos in the organization work together around this new form of, of listening to your customer. Yeah, this is fascinating to me because your customers, especially on the service side, customers are expecting First of all, if you're going to do it, be ready to execute because your customers on social don't want a, a tweet to go unanswered. If you say you're doing service, you've got to actually be ready to scale and do service. But um, I think that it's, it's that type of thing that, again, we're all connected. We're all connected. 
Um, we expect that connection. So this is where I get really passionate about the idea of bringing, weaving social into every customer touch point, B2B, B2C, it doesn't matter, it's a customer you're, you're trying to connect with, even your internal customers your, your, you know, or your partners. So um, absolutely, and the great thing is now, I mean, it's all, so, it's, it's all uh, just uh, so fascinating to watch unfold, but the great thing is now that's happening are the platforms are all so very open that integration becomes less, and especially on the Salesforce, they're all already talking to each other, but they're also the APIs, the thing, the mesh behind the scenes that allows other systems to talk together, very, very open to helping pass those conversations through. Plus, there are other ways of doing it for those that are a little bit more lo-fi funk, right? But for service, Again, you might have in a call center, a high volume call center, some folks that have the, the ability to layer in chat. I mean, chat isn't even considered social, it's so old school, but actually it's pretty social if you think about where people are connecting on chat, right? Or feeding in that Twitter, part of their console now in the, in the call center can become a Twitter feed that's, and you can do the same type of routing you do with your IVR. The great thing is, and the thing that really excites me, and probably you too if you, when you're thinking about this, is just like on a call, when you have an IVR, you get to capture little pieces of information about what the person's problem was in call resolution, and all that becomes data that then you know about not only that customer, but processes, and how effective you are at resolving those processes. The same thing can be done with social data, which is, I mean, thrilling to someone like me because, and really thrilling to someone like me, because then I can, next time I'm talking to that person in any stack, in the sales stack, in the service stack, in the, in the, um, in the uh, customer advocacy stack, uh, it's, it's a piece of information that I now have as discoverable that helps me, I'm talking way too geeky, it's something I know about the person that helps me or the person that's dealing with that client or customer or prospect really talk to them at the moment they are in the customer life cycle. So you might resolve a service issue. If you don't roll it into all the other service data, no one is going, and you're handling it on the, on the, on the um, social channel, no one else ever gets to benefit from that information. So my challenge to you, if you are thinking about rolling this stuff in through sales, through service, through communications and PR, and getting out of digital marketing and really bringing it into CRM, which is where I'm like totally fascinated, it's from the beginning, from the beginning, when you're going, why, you know, what tactical, strategic priority are we trying to tactically align to? It's then saying the next sentence is, and how will we measure success? Because how will we measure success generally in the back end for the nerds like me is by capturing the data so you can do reporting on it. And then that data helps you enrich your relationship with your customer downstream. I see a nod, I'm like, yeah, so it helps you enrich your relationship with that customer downstream. If you use it right, you can really, and I'm saying put it in front of service in a completely different way. Have an offer framework that can then tie to, once you've resolved this type of communication, then you can offer this person X, Y, or Z. I mean, there's so many different ways to handle that data. And then there's this other bit, which is being able to say, I now know this guy's Twitter handle. And how many of you, you guys are in B2C, so you're, are you using like um, DMB data to understand who you're talking to? You, do you use any like data mining to know your, how to prospect? This information can be then tied to that information and help to enrich, even on the B2B side, your customer information. And that becomes historical information that then when this sales guy leaves or this service person leaves, still the enterprise or the company benefits from having that information captured. So totally nerdy response, but incredibly interesting for someone like me who understands that data is really where you're going to improve margins or drive, drive uh, different results from your current existing programs. Yeah, and we're using the same, same model like she's talking about. Uh, it's a simple thing that, you know, I think Forrester 2012 report that came out like in January was on the social media report. And one whole entire section, which I went and showed my customer service team, it was, it, it was called social service. It's a whole new segment that's appearing, and uh, lo and behold, uh, for example, we use Zendesk for customer service. Mm -hmm. 
Um, Zendesk has the Twitter and Facebook integration, so if someone responds, uh, asks a question that is customer service specific, I can literally grab that from Hootsuite, drag it into Zendesk, creates a ticket for that response, and it goes into the queue for customer service. So the customer service can then respond, because they're the experts on our products, they can respond, and it saves it to the whole entire uh, history regarding their email profile and everything. That's a simple thing that, you know, I was talking to someone who has been a Zendesk partner and using them for five years. They didn't I even know. know that that those features are, are appearing at already in Zendesk because uh, they were you know, looking for another platform. I'm like, Zendesk has that ability. So you can start off if you're using Zendesk because integrating a customer service tool like Zendesk to your whole entire organization is a big headache. But if you have something like that, they are they know they know that this is a big changing, and uh, and that's what we're going to be using is literally uh, now I'm like yes you know now I have ten more people working social, they know the regulations they've been trained now simple drag and drop and off my hand you know mission you know mission handoff mission completed was in the Marine Corps there you go uh, so that's a simple little on what you can kind of do and it's going to happen with all the other. Uh, you know, so, you know, customer service platforms because they're realizing people need it and they're going to have to use it and you need to leverage those people. I, I remember being in meetings where the, the social media team started talking about, well, we got this complaint on, um, you know, Facebook or we had this complaint on Twitter. Now, who handles that? Is that the social media team? Is that the customer relations folks? So that was something that, you know, we were actually being more reactive than, you know, proactive because we, we hadn't thought about that or, I guess, again, the silos. So you've got the social media team going, 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 doing positive, you know, stories and putting content out there, but then not realizing what's the back end. What do you do when someone actually complains? And we get a lot of complaints about lost packages and, you know, how do you deal with that in the most effective manner? And then, and then really turn that into a success story. I mean, I think that we had one instance where there was a gentleman um, he had, there was some, he had shipped something, I think he was out in Hawaii, and he had, um, they were going to do a, a film, uh, um, he had a video crew out there, and he had a prosthetic that didn't come on time, and um, that information came through one of our media, our social media channels, and we were able to have, you know, protocol in place where we, you know, contacted, you know, it was a whole string of, of phone calls, call this person, this person, this person, so that we could get that prosthetic to that person, you know, on time for the filming of that um, video that he was doing, and then that became a success story, so that he turned around and went on social media platforms and touted, you know, how, how UPS came to the rescue and really helped save the day. So those are those kind of organic things and ways you can turn those, um, what might seem negative, um, into a success, and then they be, this customer becomes a brand advocate for you, so it was, it was great. Marissa, Roger, Jennifer, thank you. Well, thanks to Core Matrix for uh, offering up the uh, the iPad Mini. Do you want to grab that? Oh, this is pressure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, see, I'm going to drop it. Eve Machevic? Did I say it right? Machevic. Eve Machevic. Yay! All right, wonderful. Great. We'll see you at the next event. Thanks for coming out. Okay.